with you this morning I'm gonna have to ask you to do something for me and that is do not allow the empty seats to stock out your enthusiasm you hear me amen it's easy to be enthusiastic when you're surrounded by people but just imagine you're surrounded by heaven's host and don't allow the empty seats to suck out your enthusiasm hallelujah you're gonna need to hear what I've got to share today um, before we get into the message, though, I got a couple other things that um, I want to share with you. The first is with the Financial Peace University, um, I'm going to tell you the, the price of admission. I would pay it just to get some more of those ooey gooey cookies that Danielle made. Those things were fun. I thought, man, these are, these are worth going just to get the cookies, even if you don't need the information. But uh, I, I do encourage you to take advantage of this opportunity for increase in your life. You know, I don't know where I read it. Maybe it was Dave Ramsey I first heard say it. But every debt you pay off, that's like increasing your income. If you have, let's say you've got a credit card that you're paying $300 a month on and you're just minimum payments. You pay that off, you've just increased your income by $300 a month. Because that's money that's not going out. You know, there's an old saying that if your uh, outgo is greater than your income, then your upkeep's going to be your downfall. Did you get that? I'll say it again so you can get it. If your outgo is greater than your income, then your upkeep is going to be your downfall. Amen? It, it's a listen. We can't blame everything on the devil. Sometimes we do what we do to ourselves. If that ain't true for no one else in this house, it's true for me. There were years the devil didn't even have to get involved in my life. I was doing a good enough job by myself. I was his assistant. You understand what I'm saying? And the, uh, it's amazing. Listen, when you read through the book of Proverbs... You could almost say it's not a supernatural book because there's no talk of miracles and divine intervention. But there's two primary players in the book of Proverbs. The wise man and the fool. The wise man is prosperous and lives a good life. The fool, the Bible says, calls for stripes upon his own back. You don't even got to do nothing to the fool. The fool will do it to himself. It's time for the people of God to put away foolishness. And so we need people to teach us wisdom. And Financial Peace University is a great way to learn some wisdom concerning economics. Because, you know, listen, you could, go to, you could go through all of the institutions of higher education and get a couple PhDs and all the other things and not understand how to do a checkbook. The things we really need, they don't teach us in school. So avoid debt. Um, let's see, a couple of, oh, Tammy uh, Galloway sent a uh, um, text to me and asked me to thank everyone. She was going into what could have been a very horrible situation and uh, down in Louisiana. And so it was either, was it last week or the week before we prayed for her? Week before. And he, his Sister Yvonne gave a tongue and Linda Albrecht gave the interpretation and Tammy said exactly what was prophesied is what came to pass. There was absolute peace and people that were bitter enemies acted like they were best friends. And uh, so she said to tell RLC, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, also, I think it was last week, we raised a very impromptu offering for a pastor down in the Dominican Republic. I don't have his name in front of me. And... Um, who's having trouble just feeding his family and I want to congratulate all of you because just very $500 came in 
that we'll be able to sow into that pastor. So I want to congratulate your generosity. And then also this past week, uh, I don't know if any of you have ever heard of this up-and-coming preacher by the name of Kenneth Copeland. And uh, we were afforded the opportunity to go to a pastor's luncheon. And uh, he's coming to Charlotte for the first time in, I understand, many years. Uh, he's going to be there September 20th through the 22nd. We'll have some information back there and in the uh, cafe. And uh, so that's a Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And uh, if you want to volunteer, we'll have a link up on our Facebook page and our website. And they're looking for volunteers. And if you want to volunteer, you'll get preferred seating. Where that preferred seating is, I have no idea. So if they don't put you on the front row, it ain't my fault. Y'all here this morning. But that is, I would, I, we're going to be there. I don't know if we'll be there for the, we'll probably not be there for Saturday, but we will be there for some of the meetings. And um, let's see, I think that's about it. Are you ready to worship the Lord with your offering this morning? Are you ready to share the love? Fake it till you make it. Go ahead and give the Lord. Act like you're a hilarious giver, even if you're not. Amen. Listen, this is you know that our, at RLC, we're not going to threaten you and tell you your dog's going to get the mange, your cat's going to die, your hamster's going to have a stroke if you don't give. But we are going to tell you this. If you know the love of God and you understand the grace of God, you don't have to be extorted from to give. All you have to do is be granted an opportunity. Because God loves a cheerful, hilarious, ready-to-give giver, someone whose faith motivates them and they can't wait to do it because they recognize that everything they have in life came from Him. I'm telling you what, once in a while it would do us some good to think, what if God had our attitude concerning generosity? Hello? What if God was just like you and me? And thought, well, you know what, it's kind of inconvenient to give today, so I ain't going to give my people oxygen. Come on now, y'all here? What if, listen, the Bible makes it clear we're supposed to be like him. Okay? But imagine if he was like us. If he had it but didn't want to give it. Where would we be? Because you got to understand, if God withheld from you, you wouldn't suffer. You would die. Because everything you need for life. The air that you breathe, the light that we bathe in, the, the life that's in us, it all came from Him. So He is the giver of every good thing. And thank God the Bible says He withholds no good thing. So if we're to be like Him, that means that we don't withhold. But pastor, what if I... Don't let the butts get between you and God. Just do what He said, amen? So if you're ready, hold up your offering this morning. If you've already given online, just hold up your hand. Let there be a point of contact. Father, this morning, we have chosen to give. Not because we lack needs. We have plenty of needs. But we know you meet all of our needs according to your riches and glory. So, Father, we don't look to ourselves in despair. We look to you in faith. And we believe that you are able to do abundantly and exceedingly above and beyond anything we could even hope or imagine to ask. You have removed fear from us. So we are fear-free. So this morning, Father, the motivation of this offering is love. The catalyst is faith. We believe that tomorrow holds untold potential and promise. We don't look into our future with eyes of fear, but with eyes of faith. And so we sow today into that day to come. Knowing that when we encounter our harvest, it will be pressed down, shaken together, running over. Will it fill our bank accounts, our wallets? Father, I pray that we'd be so blessed our houses would be messy because we've got too much stuff. Got to give it away. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. If you're ready at this time, please bring your offerings forward. Hallelujah, Father. Thank you, Jesus.
Thank you, Father. Thank you, Princess. Hallelujah. Well, are you ready for the word this morning? Are you ready to be changed? Are you ready for life to increase? You cannot... Re- Listen. The only way you can hear the word... Everyone say, I'm listening. The only way you can hear the word and not be changed is to not mix faith with it. Did you hear what I just said? The only way you can hear the word and not be changed, your mind not changed, your circumstances not changed, your physical body not changed, the only way you can hear the word and it not bring a change in your life is you didn't mix faith with it. If the word doesn't change us, it's not because the word is impotent. It's because we're faithless. There's a renewed interest in faith by the Spirit of God across many denominations. People are going back and preaching faith. You know why? Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. In fact, I heard in my meditation time this week, And on the inside, I heard the Spirit of Grace say, my people have only two choices. And I responded, thinking I knew where the Lord was going, I responded, that's right, the blessing and the curse. But on the inside, as if I didn't say anything, usually with me, when the Lord ignores what I said, it's because I got it totally wrong. You follow me? He just goes on as if I didn't say anything. And what I heard on the inside was to walk by faith or not. So I want to say it this way. As a, how many of you are believers? Raise your hand if you're a believer this morning. You've given your life to Christ. As you journey through life, you have only two choices. You can walk by faith or not. It's amazing. God is a God of absolutes. He doesn't see us. In and out and in and out and in and out. We either in or we out. We either walking by faith or we're not. Amen. So if these are our only two choices, and they are, it would behoove us to focus on our faith and make it stronger. Because you got to understand that the, the only way you access all the promises of God, and they're great and they're many, is by faith. It's a hard lesson to learn, but learn it we must. God does not respond because our need is great. God responds when our faith is great. Because I know, listen, there was a time in my life and I was zealous for God, but I despise church. I got tired of church. You know why? Because I got tired of hearing about people talking about the blessings, and I had none. I got tired of hearing people talk about what God was doing, and I saw no evidence of him doing nothing in my life. Hmm? And I know what it is to sit at home, alone, in the darkness, and cry, and complain, with tears running down my face, accusing God of being unjust because he's blessing others and ignoring me. Maybe no one else has ever done that. And in my need, I would tell God, you are unfair and unjust because you're blessing those who have no need and you're ignoring my great need. Then I heard a man of God say, God will pass over a million in need to get to one who believes. You know what I discovered about the truth? Is this okay this morning? You know what I discovered about the truth? Before it liberates you, it infuriates you. Because when somebody speaks the truth to your pain, your first response is anger. Why? Because it would be so much easier if it was their fault. It'd be so much easier if I could blame it on my mama, my papa, my Uncle Joe, my Aunt Sue, or God himself. But when you lay the fault at my feet, 
I don't like that. But then I discovered that the man of God was right. I could sit alone at night and cry every single night and God would do nothing for me. Or I could shake myself and stir myself and feed myself the word and, and, and cause my faith to be strong. And it's amazing how when I changed, it seemed as if he changed, though he does not change. Because suddenly he was involved in my life. Y'all hearing me? If we're going to live by faith, then our faith must be effective. But not everyone's faith is effective. Today, my goal is to give you four keys to effective faith. Not everyone's faith is effective. Some, their faith is ineffective, inactive, passive, and powerless. So lifeless that in the book of James, James called it dead faith. And you know what he said about dead faith? It's of no benefit to you or anyone else. It doesn't help you, and it doesn't help those around you. Can you say amen? Or oh me? Because I've been there. I, 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 I loved God, but my faith didn't bless no one. It didn't bless her. It didn't bless me. And I certainly wasn't a blessing to anyone else around me. But our faith doesn't have to be ineffective. Hear me when I tell you this. Every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, no matter your age, no matter where you come from, your faith can be aggressive, it can be active, and it can be effective. You can have such faith that when you speak a thing, it comes to pass. When you call for something, it appears at your doorstep. You can have world-changing faith. Because the Bible says to each of us has been given a measure of faith. Jesus said if you had faith the size of a mustard seed. Everyone say effective faith. faith. Today we're going to learn how to have effective faith. Go with me if you would to the book of Philemon chapter 1 verse 6. I'm going to read it to you out of three different translations. Chapter 1, verse 6, I'm going to read it to you first out of the King James. That the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. Do you see that? Everyone say effectual. That's just a poetic way of saying effective. That the communication of your faith, the sharing of your faith would become effective. Again, reading it to you out of the New American. And I pray that the fellowship of your faith may become effective through the knowledge of every good thing which is in you for Christ's sake. And then again out of the New Living Translation. And I am praying that you will put into action the generosity that comes from your faith as you understand and experience All the good things we have in Christ. Effectual, effective action. Faith is not meant to be passive. I want to say that to you again. Faith is not meant to be passive. Biblical faith is not passive faith. Biblical faith is an aggressive faith. Biblical faith, Hebrews chapter 11, says that by faith they received back the dead. By faith they experienced miracles. By faith they changed nations. By faith they altered the course of history. Faith is not passive. Faith is not powerless. Faith is aggressive. And our faith can be effective. You and I can know such a life that when we pray, it changes. I mean, listen, we can develop our faith if we're willing to do so. We can develop our faith to such a place that we become a pain in the devil's backside. That, I mean, demons have a panic attack when you wake up in the morning. That you become hell's nightmare. Huh? Instead of having nightmares, be a nightmare. Key number one, how to have effective faith. Please listen to these four keys. 
Everyone say, I'm listening. listening. And remember what I told you. If you'll mix faith with what you hear, it'll result in more faith. But if you don't believe it, if you just think that's great, then this is just one of a million other sermons you've heard over your life. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of hearing sermons that don't change me. And it ain't the preacher's fault. Man, when I listen to T.D. Jakes, I say, I'm listening, bro. When I listen to Kenneth Copeland, I don't say I've heard that a thousand other times. Oh, Brother Hagin said it better. No, I'm like, I needed that right there. What you said just now, I receive. Key number one, understand that the Bible pays no attention to silent faith. You'll hear people say their their intention is good, but their education level is low. Well, brother, I believe in my heart. Well, whoop-dee-doo. Are y'all here? The Bible, listen, salvation doesn't result from just believing in your heart. You believe in your heart and you confess with your If you just believe in your heart, but you don't confess with your mouth, that's not biblical faith. And it will not result in your healing, your prosperity, your breakthrough, your salvation, your deliverance. Listen to me. Faith doesn't change after you get saved. Right? To get saved, you must believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. Why do some people think that after salvation, now faith has changed? It's okay if I just believe in here. No, 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 no. If you believe in here, it's got to come out of here. Because if it doesn't come out of here, it's not biblical faith. It may be religious faith, but it ain't biblical faith. The Bible pays the worst insult to silent faith. It ignores it. Key number one. The Bible pays no attention to silent faith. Listen to this in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. But having the same spirit of faith, everyone say spirit of faith. faith. Having the same spirit of faith according to what is written, and that's important, not according to how I feel. And you've heard me say it to you before. If it's written, then your uncertainty is unnecessary. You don't have to wonder what the will of God is if it's written. Is it God's will to heal you? Is it written? If it's written, then your uncertainty is unnecessary. Is it God's will to prosper you? Does the Bible say so? Then you don't need to be uncertain. So, Paul said, having the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed, therefore, what did he do? He spoke. That's the spirit of faith. The spirit of faith speaks. What does it speak? What is written? Confession, I don't care how many ignorant preachers you hear say this. Confession is not about manipulating God. That's what I, every time I hear someone who's anti faith, they say, well, confession is just an attempt to manipulate God. No, 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 no. It's an agreement with God. I don't need to manipulate God to do what he said. All I need to do is agree that if you said it, you'll do it because you watch over your word to perform it. I'm not trying to manipulate divinity. I'm agreeing with divinity. Now, do some people abuse it? Of course. Some people abuse aspirin. I bet you you still have it in your house. You don't throw something out just because somebody abuses it. You just read the label. If it says take two all day, then don't take 25. My wife always has to watch me with that. I think, you know, if it's vitamins and it says take two, then 20 will make me buff. (laughs) Didn't know it would make me barf. (laughs) Just do what the Bible says, amen? So Paul said, I believe, therefore I spoke. We also believe. We are, do you believe? Yes. So if you believe, what do you do? We speak. we speak. Why? Because that's the evidence of faith. Faith comes out of my heart. I, I say what I believe. The Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if I've hidden his word in my heart, guess what's going to come out of my mouth? Y'all are so sharp. 
Truth, listen, truth is everyone speaks what they believe. If you listen to people long enough, now I'm not talking about in their holy moments at church. I'm talking about Monday morning. In their unguarded moments. If I could be with you when you didn't know I was with you, I would know what you really believe. Because everyone speaks what they believe. The transformation is when we put what is written in here and what we speak is what God has said. Hallelujah, Father. Listen to this in Mark chapter 11, verse 22. Reading it to you out of the New American Standard. And Jesus answered. Now you know that the preface before this is Jesus went to, get, went, went, went to the drive through to get something to eat. But the drive through was closed. The drive through happened to be a fig tree. Yeah. Right? And Jesus said, if I ain't going to eat from you, ain't no one ever going to eat from you. So I, I declare this restaurant completely closed. Yeah. And the next day when the disciples went by, they saw a foreclosure sign up there. And they were amazed because Jesus had just prophesied it the day before. And they said, we ain't never seen this before. How'd you do this? And this is what Jesus said to him right here. Listen to this. Jesus answered saying to them, have faith in God. But a literal translation, allow me to read this to you out of the Young's literal, will say this. Jesus answering saith to them, have the faith of God. That's a literal translation. Have the faith of God. You know, over the past couple of weeks, we've been talking about God inside minded. If you and I Thank you for watching today. For a donation of any amount, we would like to offer you an audio CD of today's message in its entirety. Just contact us here at Real Life Church using the information that is on your screen. For a donation of any amount, an audio CD of today's message in its entirety. Just contact us here at Real Life Church.